I would record on the cloud, Andrea. Yes, just in case. Okay, we are recording on the cloud and uh, well, welcome Camila. And today we are going to deal with um, chapter five or unit five re related to the, the rights of children, children and girls and adolescents and the Convention of the Rights of the, 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 ch the Child. In fact, it's the Convention of the Rights of the Child, only child. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, on one hand, I have a, um, a watching activity or listening activity. Camila, did you download the, um, the, the sheet of paper with the activity, uh, with the yeah. assignment? Uh, did you send it today? Yes, through the um, yes, yes, I heard you. Group. Yes, you may download it on the phone, perhaps. Can you? Yes, I have it. Okay, okay, excellent. Well, I think that um, let's see. I have this. This is the thing. First of all, we may read Gabby's comment. Yes. What? So we could wait for her. Gabriela Conde is coming, Gabriela so Conde. we could okay. Yes, okay. wait for her to download also the PDF. Okay. okay. And we silent this. Yeah. <laughs> Gabriela, hello. I will open the PDF. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hello, Gabriela. How are you? I'm Hi. okay. Okay. Did you download the assignment sheet of paper? Uh, the one you sent uh, a yes. few <laughs> hours before? Yeah, yes. oh, yeah. A I did, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We will read the assignment first. Okay, this is the watching activity. You know that today we're going to deal with the rights of the child. The name is the child. No, they, they don't say children's right. Mm -hmm at least in the convention. The convention, the convention name is the, the Convention on the, right of the, or on the Rights of the Child. Even though in Argentina we say La Convención de los Derechos de Niños, Niñas y Adolescentes, in English is the Convention of the Rights of the Child or CRC. Okay, so this is the, the assignment for the watching activity. And uh, the thing is that um, this person, I don't remember, I think that he, he says the name, I don't remember the name exactly, is a journalist. The journalist goes uh, to, to one place and the other place and makes some um, interviews with relevant people and, uh, she, and he um, records some children working because the whole um, the whole video is related to child's labor, child's labor, because we are going not only to deal with the, the convention on the rights of the child, but also on the on one convention related to uh, children's um, labor, uh, as regards a convention of the ILO or OIT, ILO convention. Marcela is going to come to Marcela 11. I don't know Marcela 11 who is. Okay, so the, um, the assignment is as follows. What is the US department? Because it's all related to the US. Mind that is the US and the US is one, is the only one uh, country that has not signed the CRC. The U.S. has not signed, not obliged by, by the, US, the CRC. But even though uh, the, the U.S. has some uh, regulations as regards child labor. So what is the U.S. department where the journalist is located? And you can see the U.S. department at the front. It's a banner, yes, at the front, at the beginning. The journalist says that the idea of child labor may seem something we don't know. And then he interviews a woman, a young woman. So what does the first woman say? And the name, if you grasp the name, and um, she says something that uh, related to uh, that she started as a baby with her who at 
probably an age there. And she started picking blueberries. And somebody says, when we think of children working in the US, we think of at. So Gabriela, Gabriela, can you read number five now? Can you listen to me? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but I don't know what the... Number, number five, another uh, size? Yeah, another size, the US law is so, uh -huh. I don't know what, okay. We don't know. Particularly in the fields. Yes. Uh, follow one, please. Okay. A banner says that work days of more than 10 hours are... Um, you know that you should say says, says, not says, says. Okay, says. Okay. okay. The, uh, the second girl says that her year old brother had uh, had the opportunity not to be in the fields. Um, number eight, you can be a uh, five old blueberries you just pick up one at a i don't know and you are going to fill up your i don't know either not as quickly as others but they will give you maybe um i don't know dollars and um, number nine is super dangerous kids are getting hurt um, and that's, it. that's it that's it okay <laughs> <laughs> so that's the assignment marcela are you there marcela yes Ah, okay. Hello. Hello. Can you turn on your camera? If yes. You can. Yes, but uh, if you can not, it is so bad that. Okay. Excellent. Hello. I can see you there. Okay. It's ju it was just to see your face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome, Marcela and Gabriela, and all, also, of course, Camila who was the first one. And Camila sat for um, an exam as a sailor, you know? So it's Camila Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. No, no, congratulations, Camila. Because uh, and she Thank got you. an A as a sailor. <laughs> so, so strange. Excellent. So cool. So yes, we, we indeed, we have uh, very good students here, even as a sailor. Excellent, okay. Well, this was the assignment, yes? So we are going to watch the video if we can. Can you see the video? Yes? Yes. Okay. I have clicked on share sound, that's important. And now you must tell me whether you can- I, I don't see the video. You don't see the video? No, me neither. Okay, so I stopped sharing and I will resume sharing now. You will see. And now? Uh, seems so. It's uh, starting, yes. I think. Yeah. Can you see a, a round circle in the middle? Yes. Okay, that's the video. Now we are going to test uh, sound. Can you listen to it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I will start again. Welcome to DC Direct. I'm Lionel Donovan. Here in this show, we try to break down some of the bigger stories here in the US, but we want to hear from you. So follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at TRT World. And use the hashtag DC Direct to let us know what you think. Can and you be listen part of our to conversation. it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mind the banner in, at the front. What does it say? United mm -hmm. States Department of Labor. Remind mind that. Okay. In today's show, we're talking about child labor in the U.S. The idea of children in harsh working conditions may seem like a thing of the past, but child labor still exists in the U.S. Araceli is all too familiar with this phenomenon, and it's been something that she has experienced for nearly her entire life. You are a former child laborer yourself, correct? Yes, I've been doing a lot of child labor. 
How old were you when you first started? I, I first started as a maybe a baby. My mom would just take me out to the fields, put me in her back, and she would just be working. And at 14, I started picking blueberries, onions, grapes. The image that Abaseli describes of children and minors in the workforce in the U.S. is quite different than what many Americans would imagine. But Reed Maki says the image is all too real. When we think of kids working in the United States, it's usually the idea of a teenager working at uh, the fast food place in order to buy, get enough money to buy a phone or anything. Um, is that the case when it comes to child labor in the U.S.? Do we have that picture right? That type of work really isn't considered child labor. Um, child labor is work, is, is work that damages the development of a child, and that usually means that they're working at too young of an age or that, they're, um, that their health is impacted, um, they're working too many hours. Um, it's, it's an exploitative situation. Some of it is allowed by U.S. law because U.S. law is so weak, particularly in agriculture. We allow children as young as 12 to work unlimited hours in the fields. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, agriculture ranked as the most hazardous industry in 2017 and 2018. Yet there are around half a million children in the U.S. working on farms. Many are as young as eight years old. And work days of more than 10 hours are not uncommon. So are your younger siblings still in the fields as well? My five-year-old brother, he's in the Head Start program. Okay. So he luckily has that opportunity not to be in the fields like I was. However, my other siblings, they're, they're at that age where they're able to work. When you say what age they're able to work, what age would that be exactly? Well, you can be a five-year-old picking blueberries. You could just pick one at a time and you'll fill up your bucket, not as quickly as an adult, but you'll fill it up and that'll be enough to maybe give you $4. Agriculture is super dangerous. Kids are getting hurt all the time. Uh, the, the, the Government Accountability Office did a report last year, and it found that agriculture was really the most dangerous area that children are working in in the U.S. That same report suggests that 100,000 child farm workers are injured on the job every year, and that children account for 20% of farming fatalities. I actually got into an accident. I fell off a tractor, and I have a lot of um, scars on my stomach. I also sliced my finger when I was doing the onion crop. There's a lot of um, going to the hospital for just pain or um, heat strokes. Yeah. Okay. You, stuff like that. That was up to the point I prepared the activities. Uh, could you grasp some of the, the results to fill in the to fill the gaps? Uh, not all of them, but uh, most of them. Yes. And um, I think that, you know, that uh, the sound when I watch the video on my computer without sharing it uh, through the through Zoom is perfect. And now it seems to be lower. I don't know why. Well, okay. Uh, would you like to, to listen to it again? Or can we revise the results? Um, whatever you I would want. like to listen again. Okay, we can listen to it again. It, it's only four minutes. Yes. So we will start again. Welcome to DC Direct. I'm Lionel Donovan. Here in this show, we try to break down some of the bigger stories here in the U.S., but we want to hear from you. So follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at TRT World. And use the hashtag DC Direct to let us know what you think and be a part of our conversation. In today's show, we're talking about child labor in the U.S. The idea of children in harsh working conditions may seem like a thing of the past, but child labor still exists in the U.S. Araceli is all too familiar with this phenomenon, and it's been something that she has experienced for nearly her entire life. You are a former child labor yourself, correct? Yes, I've been doing a lot of child labor. How old were you when you first started? 
I, I first started as a maybe a baby. My mom would just take me out to the fields, put me in her back, and she would just be working. And at 14, I started picking blueberries, onions, grapes. The image that Abaseli describes of children and minors in the workforce in the U.S. is quite different than what many Americans would imagine. But Reed Maki says the image is all too real. When we think of kids working in the United States, it's usually the idea of a teenager working at uh, the fast food place in order to buy, get enough money to buy a phone or anything. Um, is that the case when it comes to child labor in the U.S.? Do we have that picture right? That type of work really isn't considered child labor. Um, child labor is work, is, is work that damages the development of a child, and that usually means that they're working at too young of an age or that, they're, um, that their health is impacted, um, they're working too many hours. Um, it's, it's an exploitative situation. Some of it is allowed by U.S. law because U.S. law is so weak, particularly in agriculture. We allow children as young as 12 to work unlimited hours in the fields. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, agriculture ranked as the most hazardous industry in 2017 and 2018. Yet there are around half a million children in the U.S. working on farms. Many are as young as eight years old. And work days of more than 10 hours are not uncommon. So are your younger siblings still in the fields as well? My five-year-old brother, he's in the Head Start program. Okay. So he luckily has that opportunity not to be in the fields like I would. However, my other siblings, they're, they're at that age where they're able to work. When you say what age they're able to work, what age would that be exactly? Well, you can be a five-year-old picking blueberries. You could just pick one at a time and you'll fill up your bucket, not as quickly as an adult, but you'll fill it up and that'll be enough to maybe give you $4. Agriculture is super dangerous. Kids are getting hurt all the time. Uh, the, the, the Government Accountability Office did a report last year, and it found that agriculture was really the most dangerous area that children are working in in the U.S. That same report suggests that 100,000 child farm workers are injured on the job every year, and that children account for 20% of farming fatalities. I actually got into an accident. I fell off a tractor, and I have a lot of um, scars on my stomach. I also sliced my finger when I was doing the onion crop. There's a lot of um, going to the hospital for just pain or um, heat strokes. Yeah. When okay. stuff like that happens, do you? We can now we can go for the results. Uh, first of all, I would like to remind some some of the of, of new words. For instance, they talk about fatality. Pay, pay, fatalities <laughs> is different, difficult. Fatalities, uh, they talk about um, exploitation, um, onion crop, um, what else? Any other new word that you can remember from the, from the, the video? Well, I, I had to Google bucket. Bucket. <laughs> yeah. It's balde. Uh, yes, yes. yes. Like a sack or something to to get lots of things. Yes. What other new word can you remember? No. Camila. Okay. And, and onion crops was interesting also. And then she, she said something related to uh, some kind of injury. Difficult word. Uh, Andrea, I, I don't know if you you could grasp that. But I could couldn't. But it's um, something that she she hurt herself. Yeah. Uh, she she says she she says she slides her finger. I think. And then she says something. Ah, something else. else. Oh. Yes, yes, lots of injuries. And she says that she was she had the stomach full of scars. Also, okay. So we can go for the the, the PDF now, if I can. That's it. Okay, so what is the U.S. department where the journalist is located at the front? Because there's a banner. Do you remember? Department of Labor. The department of Labor. Excellent. The journalist says, the journalist, do you remember the, the journalist's um, name? He says, 
the name. I oh. know, uh, I remember the name of her. Uh, what, what's her name? Uh, Araceli. Araceli. Uh, Araceli. Araceli, yes. And he's Lionel also, yes. Lionel. Okay, the journalist Lionel says that the idea of child labor may seem something of the past. Of the past. Uh, sorry? Sorry, sorry? Of the, of past. the past. Okay. Okay, uh, so write it down. Uh, what does the first woman, Araceli, say? What is her name? Araceli. She started as a baby with her? Mom. Mom. Uh, Camila, now you. At what? 13. Uh, I think that it was when he was very, very, very young. I ah, yes. No, she says she, says she, she started says as a baby, but then... <laughs> She refers that she start picking blueberries at 14. At 14, okay. Yes. Okay, somebody says, when we think of children working in the US, we think of, uh, Marcela, can you remember? We think of? Marcela, are you uh, there? Oh, okay. Yes, yes, I, no, because I, I heard about Farmer child, but I don't know. Okay. What. okay. Somebody. Farm, farmer. What we think of uh, working at? She, uh, she says we think. Uh, he said no. Uh, somebody says uh, yes. we think of kids working at fast fast food fa services. Kids. I think working at fast he food. says teenagers. Teenagers. Yes. Uh, not so young people. Okay, another says that US law is so, uh, um, Gabriela? Weak. So weak, particularly in the fields. Yes, and remember, they are not sub subscribed to the CRC, the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Even though they, they are part of the, U, the UN and United Nations, they have not signed the Convention on the rights of a child. And I think that they are the only one, the, the, the same happens with the Tokyo Convention related to the environment. They have not signed the Tokyo Convention in order to, to take care of the environment. Okay. I think that they are, they are preparing themselves to, to breach children's rights or perhaps the Environment. And criminals, because they didn't yes. subscribe the, the um, International yes. Criminal Court. Yeah. Yes, and the CRC is so, in fact, it's basic, it's quite basic. It's not so um, delicate when we talk about uh, children's rights. For instance, the ILO convention related to the to, the, to children working says that children shouldn't work when they are under 14. So it's very basic. In Argentina, the law says that children under, under 16 cannot work. But the ILO convention, the standard is lower. Well, I think that the same happens with the CRC. It's very basic, even though it's so basic, the United States have not signed the CRC. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, another says that the you know, okay is weak, particularly in the fields. A banner, a banner says that work days, that work days of more than ten hours are not common. Work days of more than ten hours. Somebody grasped it or not? Yeah. Tell me. Ah, uh, hey, Camila not told uncommon. it before. Camila, tell me, tell me. Oh, okay, not uncommon. Not uncommon. So uh, they are children, they are, for instance, 10 years old, and they uh, work more than 10 hours per day. The second girl says that her, the, the, the same girl, I think, is the same girl, says that her uh, year old brother had, uh, had the opportunity not to be in the fields. Five, five year old. Um, because that boy was in this program that fosters not to have children working. 
But other, other children, other brothers are working, she says, a pity. Well, you can be a five, five, what, five? Five year old. Years. Year old. Mm, okay, five year old. In this case, it's five year old. Because if you say, if you say it as, um, as an adjective, Previous to noun, you say five-year-old kid. In this case, you don't add the, the S. You say five-year-old. But if you say this, this boy is five years old. In that case, you add the S. I don't know why, but it happens that way. Yeah, it's What's a common noun. Tell me, tell me, Andrea. You, you can explain it better than me. Yeah. A five-year-old kid uh, comes to be like a compound noun yeah five year old kid all um divided by slashes hyphen. Say? Hyphen. Hyphen. yeah hyphen. five year old kid so all, all that yes five year old yeah. kid uh, becomes a noun itself so the combination of all those uh, words uh, all those now this is to explain this yes the, um <laughs> They, they were like not linguistics and analysis. Yeah. An it has a name, I don't remember, but these elements uh, turn into one noun, a, a big compound noun. Uh, but if you say this kid is five years old, in that, that is like the complement yeah, of yeah. the of the subject and the verb. It would be like the predicado in Spanish. Okay. So in remember English, yeah. prior to the noun, not the s. Yes. If it goes after, if you say the noun, e, the, the, this person is and as a predicate, so it, there it goes the yes, remember. So you can be a five year old, what? Five year old? Camila, can you, you, do you have the, the answer? Picking blueberries. Picking blueberries. You just pick up, pick one at a time. One at a time. No, 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 no. I remember because of my memory. Um, Marcela, do you have the, the answer there? You just pick up one at a It's an expression, in fact. Marcela, are you there? No, I... no. No, no. Okay, Gabriela, have you got the... Uh, yeah, one at a time. One at a time, because it's an, it's an idiom. One at a time, one at a time, remember you should remember the whole expression one at a time. And you're going to fill up your- uh, Your bucket. Your bucket, the famous bucket, the famous bucket. Not as quickly as others, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what is the purpose of having a five-year-old kid working with a bucket the whole day to fill in one bucket and it's a, a boy, <laughs> it's terrible. They will give you uh, maybe Four, Four dollars. Yes. And last one, nine. Uh, what is no one wants to say it is agriculture. Agriculture, yes. Agriculture is super dangerous and kids are getting hurt. Do you remember the image while they say kids are getting hurt? There's yes. I remember. Uh, tell me. Yes. Please. Tell me. What do you remember? Even in Spanish, whatever. What do you remember? In the video about yes, the, the video, the, the, video. The, girl, the girl, the girl uh, with with the knife in her fingers. Yes. Yes. Uh, and what else? There was a a small boy near mm -hmm. the girl. Uh, running, running across yes. a field, across a field. Yes, um, aside the the vehicle. Exactly, the tractor. Talking. I don't know what. I think it's tractor, isn't it, Andrea? Tell me, tell me. Excellent. So it's tractor. Yeah. Well, that was my first activity, just to to go into into the topic of children. Screen sharing has stopped. Okay. You know that yesterday I was uh, delivering uh, part of the class as I'm now with Thomas. <laughs> and then when I uh, clicked, because I thought I am finishing the activity, 
I stopped the, the Zoom. <laughs> so <laughs> it was terrible. They had to start again. Okay. Now, um, another thing I have for you is the need to revise what we have in the uh, platform because uh, I need to revise that with you. You know that here, for instance, and the ICER convention and the third and the ICER convention was unit four. And there are, there are some activities there. You know that even though sometimes I say, well, this activity is up to this date, but even though I do that in general, I don't um, make proper deadlines because I know that you need more time. But even though I do that, uh, try to go on with the activities, at least one or two per week, because in two or three weeks, we are finishing the, the lessons and you have to, to go to all the activities and have the 85% uh, finished at least in one month more. I have then, a question. Tell oh. me. No, 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 finish, finish, please. Tell me, tell me because okay I'm, no um i've been doing it like mostly most of them okay. but um uh, <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> but uh there's one that i didn't do um it's a little old but it like uh, um the expires date is until 24 september 24 i think it's, okay. it was from uh, july 24 to september 24 so it okay. was like a lot of time and yes. um, and that one um is a kind of a test or a questionnaire i'm i'm not really sure because i didn't open it because i think i have only one chance so i i will try to oh, open it when when I, when I do that i i create lots of opportunities to do that because oh it's okay it's oh, okay great <laughs> okay <laughs> good good i i i, I wanted to know that yes i will tell you when it is an exam whether it is an exam or not probably it's an exercise all of them are exercises it, in order it, to yeah. practice okay okay cool okay thank you uh, okay, okay. So uh, remember, unit four is the, the SIR convention and some assignments that are there, the ISIL assignments, exercise, 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 and you should deliver the, the results through, um, through this place. Oh, and it says until the 31st August, I will extend that. Yes, this is the, the activity place, let's say. The activity place and you should deliver that I, I i cannot see the activity the same way you see it but that's the activity place i will extend the deadline i, okay. I feel like already done that the only one is left is th that one that i i, I wasn't sure yeah. about what what should i do okay okay so there there uh, was three activities for the icert and then I added some material from last year, and it was related to glass ceiling, which is a concept, uh, a, gender, a gender studies concept. It's related to the, the feeling women and minorities have when they don't, they cannot go up the scale of posts and functions, for instance, they cannot be CEOs, in companies or whatever because they are women or minorities and that's the glass ceiling and that's the con the, the concept the, uh, the ppt related to glass ceiling the, um, and some theory related to glass ceiling perhaps i i didn't create an activity for that but this is a, a concept that can be useful in order to prepare the, the final um work that we can we we have to prepare yes uh about so that, that, that uh, yes uh, do we have any um i, I i'm not Copy. really sure the extension or anything else or the, even the subject you know that uh, at first i i had some requirements that were very 
exigent, but later on I reduced my ambitions and um, so my decision is uh, my, in, in uh, following years because in, in 2019 when I started it was a full uh, final work with uh, lots of pages um, so it, I think that it was quite exigent and some people had problems in order to finish it but then and I said well uh, I, I don't remember exactly the requirements now but they are not so exigent and on the other hand uh, you can do the the final work in pairs or in, in group groups of three three persons you know that's the that's a very good option to to finish the the, the final work but it's um it's an article right it's like an article. Yes, it's a final oh. work. Oh, and, the okay. idea is that, and the idea is that uh, with all the final works, we prepare a book. I need yeah. to finish the book from last year because I had the books from 2019 and 2020. 2019, the book is called Argentina and the, the Argentina Enforcement of Human Rights Conventions. And it's full of the, the, the final works of all the, the students. And it has the ESBN or whatever is the name for that, the, the copyright name, and uh, it's uh, published in Juris is a platform for um, from legal works or from legal books. And um, can we uh, can we ask for help uh, uh, if we yes, have yes, any yes, any yes. travels about going to like guided it. by us? You're going to be guided by us. Oh, yes, okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Okay, yes, yes. excellent. And in 2020, the name of the book was uh, Women's Rights in Context. Didn't I tell you? Uh, okay, in 2021, I have not finished the book, <laughs> but I need to do that because it's one book per year. And last year it was related to the CRC, the rights of the children, the rights of the child and all wars are related to the rights of the child and we were thinking with Andrea of the topic for this uh, year we have to to share our ideas Andrea in order to prepare um, the topic for this year and Andrea is going to to work with us because she's going to prepare one of the chapters Andrea tell me and um there's one i i told you last last week or the other week that one one professor of the university of san luis wants to participate in our new book so it's excellent because perhaps he can um make that the university of san luis be interested in in, in our book also you know that they are related they have relationships with among the the, the professors so it's good. So that's what is our final work that is going to be in our last part. So this is the unit four. This is unit four with the activities. And now we have unit five, Convention on the Rights of the Child. Uh, this is one activity that was quite simple. Uh, you know, Andrea, Andrea uh, this activity was designed by uh, teacher um, uh, Leonor Paez. And it was time to think. Uh, <laughs> the was that must way. Be great time then. To think. Do this first, time to think. Um, because in 2019, um, Leonor Paez was part of the, the, the teachers that we had in this uh, this, uh, this diplomatic. Class. Well, in this case, the ILO convention, remember, ILO stands for uh, La OIT. The ILO and it's, uh, this convention is related to the, we we teach two different conventions as regards the rights of a child. One of the conventions is the, I think is the Child Labor Convention is related to the the age at which one person can work, and that's the, the convention that says that uh, the the limit, the floor, is. Um, to be a 14 year old person, 14 year old person, even though in Argentina, our floor is to be a 16 year old person. And uh, that's one of the, the, the conventions. And the other convention, ILO convention, is the convention on the worst 
forms of child labor. So the ILO convention works for um, talks, for instance, uh, in relation to uh, children working in mines, mines, or children working in uh, risky activities, and any kind of worst forms of uh, uh, works uh, or jobs. So two conventions um, issued by ILO. And uh, after that, I have the Hague Convention. The Hague Convention is related to family law and it's related to the cases of child abduction, but not child abduction um, by strangers. It's related to the case in which um, a father abduct uh, the, uh, their, own, their own children and goes with the children to a, another country. In this case, the Hague Convention provides some remedies um, in favor of the other, uh, the other parent uh, that needs to, to, to join the, the, and to get the, the children back. So the Hague Convention is related to this case when one of the parents take, takes the, the children and goes away with the children. It's an abduction, in fact, because the children cannot, for instance, cannot be with the mother. And the mother uh, has to, to sue the father and use the Hague Convention remedies. And you know that in Argentina, there's a fam famous case. Do you remember the case? It's a very old case. Yes, the uh, Gabriela Uriburu, maybe? Yes, yes, that's it. Yes, Gabriela yes. Uriburu. I think that the children should be older, should be adult, adults now. Uh, 25, 30. Yeah. Uh, the other day I saw in the news that uh, the first, uh, uh, sorry, her first child, uh, Getting married. Oh, in, so in Arabia, she went. In Arabia or in Arabia? Yes, in Jordania. In Jordania. Oh. Yes. So she went to Jordania and she could to stay with them. Oh, poor her and poor yes. the children. And yes. what, what, what other uh, news you have about the case? Because I don't know. Tell me. I, I I read in a newspaper. I don't remember, but uh, two weeks ago, so so because she has a foundation. Yes, against this this situation, because the the children were stole, stolen by the the father. Um, in fact, I I think that the father convinced her to go to visit some relatives in Jordania and there he said, well, whether you adjust to other uh, our customs, our mm. law, and the law says that uh, fathers are more or less the, the owners of children, <laughs> not mothers, and, or not. And she, I think that she said that she didn't adjust and she had to go back to Argentina. She couldn't visit any, any longer the, the children. Isn't it? Yes. What else? Yes. Do you know? What else you do you know about that? Uh, they they were living in the, in other country when they get married. Yes. Uh, Gabriela. Venezuela, I think, or something like. Venezuela. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And and uh, they divorced, but the law uh, were very different. Uh, in Jordania, here, Venezuela, so it was very difficult. Yes. In Jordania, well, the customs are very different, you said, but um, he, he couldn't uh, to enter to the country. I don't know why. Um, she, she couldn't enter anymore, uh, any, any longer to, to Jordania to visit the, the children. Okay, Gabriel, yes. do you know anything else about the, the case? And what about the Hague uh, Convention? Do you know? Uh, do you know something related to the Hague Convention? Uh, well, actually, I I know 
more about the ICC um, and the Rome Statute, not specifically uh, okay. the, the, the civil um, rights. Okay. Well, this is an opportunity to revise the, the Hague Convention. You know that when I first uh, designed the, the Diplomatura um, in 2019, the, the first year, I didn't have the Hague Convention. Then later on, I, I got acquainted with the case, this case that Marcela has um, narrated. So I said, I think that this is important for the, the children's rights. So that's why I included that. <laughs> I don't know whether Unit 5 is too long, <laughs> but just in case. Uh, that's no, I, I mean, for, for me, it's super interesting. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, yeah. because I am in the criminal law field, um, yeah. we, get, we get to a point where we are only uh, reading and studying criminal law thing so it's kind of um a box thing um so it's super interesting to get out of that box <laughs> and start knowing about uh, uh, different things yeah of course yes. oh, okay well i, uh, I okay tell sorry me. Yes. no i um i remember something about the religion too yes. because uh, garil arias uriburu uh, yeah, really yes, she she's Catholic. I don't know why. And Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. Catholic. Yes, and he's a uh, Muslim. So uh, this is this was other reason. Yes, yes. about all the conflict. I don't. <laughs> we women uh, should reflect on that because sometimes I think that uh, we should be more um, more. Uh, full of uh, brain, more, more brainy, brainy uh, words, Andrea, I don't know, oh. in order to pick the, our mates. <laughs> Sensible, it? intuitive, Sensible, yes. um, rational, mature, mature. aware of our choice. <laughs> aware of uh, ri risks. Of uh, you know, risks. When I was young, I all the time I thought um, that I had to be mature in order to, to think of uh, who was the person for me for all the life because sometimes we, we get in love with somebody and we say ah that's a nice person I, I probably this the, the this man the the husband of Gabriela was very enchanting or handsome or something but the thing is that afterwards um, the, the the problems ar arises the problems arise okay I stop sharing and um, well, that was my idea of uh, chatting. Also, remember, Andrea, that our chi our teacher there, um, uh, Elda, said that we had to have the students talking. <laughs> so we <laughs> talked a lot. Uh, now Andrea is going to share uh, her PowerPoint. And there's there uh, apart from that, there's there's another PowerPoint full of information that are going to hang on the platform for you. And all of it is related to the children's rights. I think that some of the parts, some of the parts of the, my PowerPoints go, are going to be coinciding or uh, they're going to be the same as uh, Andrea's, but um, it's more material for you in order to prepare the, this, the, the, the final work. Don't worry that we will, will assist you for the final work, yes? Andrea, I will leave you now as a okay. teacher in front of the class. Um, you leave me so alone. Stop recording. Stop recording. For I, I will. I am recording now. So probably oh, if you leave, I don't end happens. it. I don't end it. Yes. You you go on, please. All right. Okay. It seems to be working. All right, girls. So let me share my screen. Okay. Can you all see my my presentation? Yes. Yeah. Super. Okay. Uh, you know that um, last Friday was the anniversary <laughs> of the convention um, on the rights of the children. 
so I was like preparing the presentation and saying, oh my God, today we, um, I mean, today, today is the exact day, 32 years ago, that uh, it was signed, the convention. So uh, 32 years ago and one week, <laughs> uh, the, the world made a promise to the children. Yeah, that we, I don't know uh, where to put the, this window. Okay, so I can see. That we will do everything in our power to protect and promote the rights of the children to survive and thrive, learn and grow and make their voices heard and to reach their full potential. Um, what do you think um, in general terms, has the situation of children improved? Yes, no, in, some, in what way? And what things are left to improve um, as regards the rights? What do you think? lately in this last 32 years. What's your opinion? Are you there? Can you listen to me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, right. I think that and uh, nowadays there's uh, much less uh, child labor, mm -hmm. even though it still exists. I mean, I had a friend that um, her mother adopted two girls and they were working, I don't know, collecting herbs or some kind of vegetable I don't remember well mm -hmm. and I think that also um, um, in these past 30 something years and uh, they have also uh, the right the same rights that children uh, I mean <laughs> I don't know how to how to express it but children with both parents Mm -hmm. I have the same rights as, as some child with, I don't know, whose mother is a prostitute and doesn't know who the father is. Uh -huh. Just an example. And divorced parents are single divorced mothers. Divorced parents. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I don't know if there to... is any other change. Yeah, mm. I'm... I don't know. No, I think that uh, one important right is the participation of the children. Uh, some years ago, for example, in, with the child, uh, they don't speak or they, they didn't uh, hear. They weren't by, heard. They yeah. weren't they were heard. heard. Oh. It's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. um, no, you're right. Yes, they, I agree they weren't you. there. And now um, there are changes about this, about mm -hmm. the participation, about mm -hmm. uh, her their opinions, uh, what, what they feel about, for example, I don't know, in a divorce. Uh, uh, exactly, or, uh, yes. If they want to be with a mother or a father, or sometimes there are, are um, dangerous situations, for example. Uh, so it's very important what the, uh, they say, the yes, children say. Right. For example, sure. I yes, think that sure. participation is very important. Exactly. Uh, to express their feelings, to express their what they want. Uh, well, it's one uh, thing very different that some years ago. Yeah, for sure. Even at school, I, I teach. I, I used to teach uh, in a primary school, and uh, all mm. the time we are. I'm asking them, you know, not trying to impose, we're going to, to go deep into this, but not trying to impose, 
our ideas, but try to listen to them and um, also to encourage consider them. them. Yeah, consider the, their views, even though yes. they might look ridiculous or I don't know, not, not to make fun of them, you know, uh, try to educate them uh, so as they can express their opinion when they grow up, yeah, as an, as an adult. So yeah, you're right. Thank you, girls. Yes, according to their age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So uh, we're going to go um, article by article very briefly, okay, um, about the Convention of, on the Rights of the Children. So the definition of a child, what do you think uh, it is that someone, when someone is considered to be a child? Until 18 years old. Yeah, as the, as the picture uh, shows, yeah. Everyone yes. under 18 is considered um, a child. Teenager. Oh. Yeah, I mean, from zero to 18, they, they've got the same oh. rights described in this convention. Mm. Okay, uh, they also have these rights, no matter their race, what they think or they say, what kind of family they come from, yeah? It applies for everyone. That is article number two. The third article talks about the organi uh, organizations that deal with children and that they should do and work the best for each child. All right, number four talks about the obligation of governments to make these rights available to every child in the world. As regards number five, governments are supposed to respect the families in the guidance of their children. Uh, Article 6 talks about the right of uh, every child to live a full life, to survive and develop healthily. And of course, that the government should um, reinforce this and ensure these rights. What do you think a full life consists of? Do you consider do you have a full life when you were children? Yes, no, why? <laughs> kind of. I think I did because I had a roof over my head and I have food and parents uh, who loved me and they took care of me. Great, Gun. So they fulfilled all my physical and emotional needs. Very and that's good. Why I, and that's why I think that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another article, yeah? As you mentioned, not only the physical, but also the emotional, the mental needs of uh, a child. Okay, number seven. Um, every child has the right of a name and nationality. And governments should respect their right to have a name and nationality and the family ties. What happens nowadays with identity in Argentina? Do you mean about gender? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that uh, here in Potrero, this in Potrero, there is an <laughs> there is a school that um, it's for I um, I don't know how to say it, but different kids and kids or kids who don't know their gender and also mm -hmm. other kind of of kids kids that have been to trauma and mm. I didn't and know others. what's the name yeah of the me neither I don't know. I think it's generative school. Oh, something probably like that. the one that is in uh, <sighs> Parque Nativo? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, so they've got, I see um, every day in, um, in the classroom, yeah, 
um, teenagers uh, who consider them, themselves. Uh, for example, we've got Alejandro, he's a boy, and um, but someday he feels like a girl and he dresses like a girl. Um, sometimes, some days he speaks like Alejandro and uh, other days uh, like with a female voice. And well, we have to respect that because now it's a law. Yeah, you can choose your own identity in Argentina. Mm -hmm. What do you think yeah. Marcia, about this? No, I. Um, there, are, there are a diversity <laughs> about the identity uh, with transgender queen. I don't know yeah. why. Um, bisexual. I don't know what bisexual. is the. Yes, bisexual. Uh, bisexual. Uh, well, there is there are a diversity. But um, you say something important for me that there is a law mm -hmm. uh, about this. Yeah. Uh, Ten years ago, I think that was the approved this this law. Yeah. Uh, some years I don't know exact the time. Yes. That, 20... that the law was passed. Yes. But it has become. I mean, um, it generated like very rapid changes. Um, yes. There are even, I mean, for, for us teachers, it was like a lot to process. And uh, I've got a student um, from Chile um, in virtual remote classes. And uh, she looks like you, Marcia, but she uh, asked us to call her Roque and to try her with as a, as a him so for me it's like a mental effort to mm. because i say girls yeah like okay girls see you have a nice weekend and then i remember okay girls and um yesterday i say people you know like to generalize because i have the double effort to think that she considers as a man so girls and boy but well it is a challenge for us to to adapt to yes the new times right i i know the law i know the diversity but for me it's very difficult to yeah, <laughs> yes <laughs> I, I know this about about me and well i will try i try every day to to understand and uh, well it's it's a, a the change is very fast, so uh, it's difficult. It was difficult, but now, yeah. yes. For example, for my father, it's very. It's like inentendible for him, for right. example. Okay, yeah. Because uh, the the old people. No, yeah, for sure. They um, unconceivable, maybe something um like i don't know overwhelming somehow and um, mm. overwhelming would be like oh no me sale la palabra en español um abrumador ah, maybe okay. for for oh. all people and uh difficult to understand and comprehend yes all right so as regards article number nine the children should not be separated from the parents unless uh, it is for their own good. And um, when we talk about parents who are separated, uh, children have the right to be in contact with both. Yeah, this is something uh, that generates uh, many arguments and legal problems today. You know, the right of a child to see both parents um i i've got friends who suffer from this um but it is the right okay in the case that um article number 10 it talks about families who live in different countries so they have the right to move so that parents and children can keep in contact 
Let me know if I'm going too fast. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. All right. Well, as uh, the name says, yeah, Article 11 um, talks about the government, which has to take steps to stop children being kidnapped, being taken out of the countries. Yeah, what we talked about uh, with the case that uh, Adelia mentioned and we were discussing. All right, number 12. This is what we um, start dealing with at the beginning, yeah, the respect for children's views that is becoming every day um, more profound and it's increasing, yeah. And uh, they should be respected when they try to think or emit an opinion, uh, mostly when uh, it comes uh, to an um, an issue that affects them, yeah, like their parents' divorce, anything that can affect children, they've got the right to express their opinion. Mm. Okay, 13 has to do with, with the same thing. And also that um, they, they should get information, yeah, adapted to their interests. And um, as long, as it doesn't damage children, yeah? This is like a very, sorry for the noise. It's a, a very thin line for me, you know, the access uh, of children to information. Because um, I see that some parents don't allow them to, to use their cell phones. I, I don't have children, but I, pro I probably, not allow my my child to to use a cell phone but uh, they have the right yeah to get information the thing is that uh there there is so much information on google um that probably parents don't want them to know um at least not that way yeah that's why probably communication with children is very important i don't know if you have children girls I... I don't. I think I'm too young for that. Yeah, my um, girl. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and, uh, I, I read about a kid that um, at school, I think he was in primary school or in kindergarten, and he told a classmate, uh, give me your money or I will rape you. Oh, my Lord. And they had a meeting with their parents. And the parents say that they let the kid use their phone uh, to not bother. And that he watches porn in the phone. Also, I, I read goodness. a lot of articles that said that using mobile phones, it's not good for kids because uh, what attracts attention it's light and movement and sound. And the phone has the three things. So they, they uh, later on will develop uh, problems trying to concentrate in things other than, uh, over than those. <laughs> yeah, other than those. Yeah, I leave it. Uh, on a daily basis, um, what I try to give my classes, to deliver my classes, is like I, I always prepare, um, I, or I, I, at least I try to prepare dynamic activities, you know, um, like live worksheets, some presentations, videos. Uh, but the reality is that when they, if they go to university, the the world is. Um, it's a world apart, yeah? In university, you have to sit, you have to remain still, you have to listen to the teacher, you have to um, write hundreds of words, yeah? And I think I consider they not prepared for that reality because in, um, I don't know, even uh, the discipline in schools is uh, lowering, you know, the, the standards and, um, 
I don't know, they don't uh, generate, oh, we don't create the habit of effort, responsibility. Uh, there is plenty of access to information. So it is dangerous. As you said, this can happen, you know, a kid watching porn and damaging psychologically, maybe another kid, because what, what he said or she said was quite strong. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah we um, should be careful with that, about that. I think that not, other, oh, not only other kids, but them, themselves. Yeah, for sure. I mean, watching uh, that kind of stuff and violence mm, yeah. at that young age, there is a reason why movies uh, can be watched by children. Mm -hmm. And you can't give them access to that uh, unless you're with them at least controlling what they are seeing and telling them uh, what is the right thing to do and the moment. Yeah, in the moment that, I don't know if um, there is a parental guidance, um, I think that parents should uh, seek for the best for their children so they are uh, capable to decide when they consider that it's the right time for them to know these kind of things or not to know some things, you know, to protect them from, as you mentioned, uh, that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty complicated. <laughs> All right, so let's go with the next article. Uh, what is happening? All right, so. Uh, as every person, they've got freedom of thought and religion. Yeah, they can think and believe what they want and practice their religion. And um, parents should um, guide uh, the chil guide children in this uh, process. Okay, they they can also oh sorry meet with other children. They've got the right to meet other children to become part of a group or an organization as long as they don't uh, stop other people's rights or they don't damage themselves. Uh, Article 16 talks about uh, that law should protect the privacy of children, the protect the good name, uh, protect them from attacks against their way of life, and uh, their private life. Well, this is also very concerning because you know that uh, in social networks, um, the privacy of children is, I mean, uh, they are exposed yeah, to, to everyone. So they, they might think they are chatting with an adult and uh, I'm sorry, they might think they are chatting with a child, yeah, someone of the same age. And uh, behind the screen, there is an adult asking for photos. Um, it happened to, okay, my, my boyfriend had a, um, a little neighbor and she was, uh, she asked her mother to take pictures of her because she was, going to enter a beauty contest and then my boyfriend uh, took the computer and he realized that there was a sick man asking for uh, private photos with a uh, few clothes um, like posing it's awful it's awful and we don't have control of that I mean we cannot control uh, what happens in uh, cell phone or a computer when we're not watching, right? Even babies have got Instagram. <laughs> That's crazy for me, you know? <laughs> but well. All right. Um, we talked about the access of inf uh, to information. Yeah, the, the same thing. They have the right to access reliable, sorry, information and information that, that they can understand 
and information that doesn't harm them as children. Article 18 talks about the responsibility of both parents in bringing up their kids. Uh, of course, that government should uh, help parents, especially uh, if both parents work. And governments should also ensure the rights of uh, children to be properly cared and protected from neglect, neglect by, by parents, from abuse of any other person. As regards the children who can't be looked after by their parents and they are looked after by um, some organization, well, this situation should be uh, revised and they should respect the culture, the language and the religion of those children. 21 talks about adopt children. Um, we always have to think and governments, organizations, what's best for them. And the same rules should be applied if they are adopted in their country or in another country. As regards refugees, children uh, who come into a country, a foreign country, they should uh, have the same rights that people living in that country, despite they are refugees. Anything that you want to say, just um, raise your hand or interrupt me. Well, San Luis had a, like a big move about refugees. Do you remember? Bring in people from Syria. I had some students come ah, from there. Yes. They went to La Punta. Exactly. Uh, yes, I remember. Through the um, Corredor Humanitario? Yeah. Yes. So I think that was. Too but uh, some of them returned to their, to their country. Their homeland. Really? I, I didn't know. I read about this, yes. You read about this? Yes. Oh, I didn't know it. They returned to, uh, I, I don't know what is the country. Some of them- Syria. Yes, Syria. Yeah. Syria, 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 yes. Yes, because some of them returned. Hmm? What? Why? Because they could not adapt to San Luis or what? What was the reason? No. Yes, because uh, they they wanted to be with, they want to be with uh, their, family. their family in Syria. Yes, they stranger their custom, uh, okay, their religion. Yeah. It's yeah. very different. Yeah, way different. Yes, they they should choose or choose uh, yeah, to they return. Chose. Chose. Yeah, they chose to return. They chose to return. Yes, All right. because, uh, well, you, you know about the residencias universitarias in La Punta, mm -hmm. they, they lived there, I think. Yes, yeah, they went there, you're right. Okay. And yeah, also La Punta is, I don't know, a bit isolated. Yes, well. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Okay, children with disabilities should receive oh. special care and support in order to live an independent and full life. Okay, governments, um, are, richer countries are supposed to help poorer countries to uh, create the conditions to have um, a good quality of health clean water, nutritious food, uh, a clean environment. We know that this doesn't happen in many, many places, but well, it is a children's right to have all these uh, circumstances. All right, uh, children who are looked up by social authorities 
um, as I said, the situation should be uh, revised um, among a period of time, periods of time. Um, well, as regards Article 26, it talks about govern governments giving extra money for children who belong to families which are in need, in economical need. Well, this has to do with a standard of living, as uh, Tani said, to meet uh, the physical and mental needs. Mm, articles number 24 and 28 talk about education. Uh, children have got the right to education and the discipline should respect their dignity. They, uh, I mean, education also has to encourage the respect for the parents and uh, re the respect for their cultures. Minority cultures should be respected. They, they should learn and use the language and customs of their family if they want, despite this is uh, not the part of the majority. Well, this I think that applies to the, the Syrian children we were talking mm -hmm. about. Yes. No one could understand them. I mean, I, I, I had um, two students that were in English. Oh my God, they were brilliant. They were oh. nine and 10 years and they were amazing and so responsible. And they were always asking for more and uh, handing in homework. They were so amazing, the students. <laughs> ah. Yeah. And they lived in a punta. It was virtual. Okay. Um, every child has sorry, a, every child. Yes. Ah, sorry. sorry. No, you are a teacher in La Punta. I used to teach in the Instituto de Idioma. Ah, yes, Idi. Exactly. That's why. Okay. That's where I met them. Yeah, I don't, I can't recall the, their names. George and I don't remember the rest. Uh, and I remember now that uh, a baby was born here in San Luis. I think, I, yeah, I can't recall yes. the situation. Yes, the, the yeah. parents uh, are Syrian. I don't know what's the nationality. I think so. <laughs> yes, but I'm not sure. I, I'm, but well, they there was uh, there is a baby now. Um, do Do you know if they conceived him uh, here or she was already pregnant when she came to Argentina? No, here. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or, or, or not. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I am Puntana too. Punta. So. Punteño. Um, Punteño, yes, you're right. Maybe, Punta. yes. Precisely. <laughs> All right. Um, every child has the rest to relax, play and join a wide range of leisure activities. They have the right... Uh, this is what Adela was um, exploring, the protection from work that uh, damages their health or their education, the access to education. Government should protect them from sexual abuse and for trafficking, from being sold. Well, this picture is, um, is real. Uh, it was oh. taken uh, during the, I, I think that the first or second world war. Uh, um, yeah, I, I can. It's shocking. It's shocking. This case. photo. Yeah, I, I had found the article. Um, I don't know what time it is. Well, when when I finish, maybe I can share it in the group. Yeah, where, okay. where, where this picture was taken. Thank you. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Shock. Yeah. I think that someone came to help this woman, you know, the, the mother. But um, um. yeah. Uh, okay, number 36. 
the same, protect them from uh, things that harm their development, from being abducted, from being sold. As regards children mm. who break the law, they should not mm. be treated cruelly and they should not share a prison, you know, a cell with adults. Um, they also uh, must have contact with their families. They need a special law. Exactly. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but my, my mom told me that, uh, you know, the, the case of Diego, the policeman that was attacked. Ah, now? Yes, the policeman. Yeah. Sigatica. Diego Atica, exactly. Yes. Um, today, my mom yeah. told me that, uh, I mean, that the people who was um, accused In of committing this was released. They are teenagers. Because, yeah, the real... I read, uh, read. Oh, my Today, God. Oh, I guess fish, 15 years old. 15, uh, 13, I think, the other. So that was terrible to know. I was so shocked. I could not believe it. Yes. But we have to think maybe beyond the fact. How comes that these children act so violently? and killed a man because he, arri he arrived to intensive cares with um, Muerte Cerebral. I, I don't know how to say that yes. in English. Neurological uh, damage. Yeah. I... Serious, it's... very serious uh, no, neurological yes. damage. And how comes that children, I mean, where, where I mean, where's the family? Uh, do they go to school? What, what happens? behind this um where uh, where does that rage and that anger comes from it's oh my god it's so scary yes it's very but they what? want to, to steal the bicycle yeah but yes but uh, maybe it's a uh, an Maybe it's an adult who uh, hit in his head with a, with a rock. With a rock. Piedra, I don't know. Yes, mm -hmm. rock. This yeah. is this terrible. Yeah, it's awful. Pretty awful. Okay, as regards children in a situation of war, they should receive a special protection. And children under 15 years they should not be allowed to join the army mm. under 15 years old. Uh, this article refers to children who have been uh, neglected or abused. Yeah, uh, the government should um, offer special help for them to regain their dignity, their self-esteem, their self-respect, psychological treatment, yeah, support, especially to these children who have been victims or abused. Well, children who break the law, they should receive legal help and prison sentences should be only for serious offenses. Uh, but law applies to children. If the laws of particular countries are better than the, the rights in this convention, they, I mean, the laws of the country override this convention. Uh, number 42, we are coming to the end. Don't worry, don't get, don't fall asleep. <laughs> uh, that we all must know this convention, yeah? Uh, it, this convention should be uh, spread worldwide uh, for all parents and children, yeah? To be aware of these rights. And finally, articles from 43 to 54, talk about how this convention works and how adults and governments should work together to protect and ensure all the children's rights. Okay, <laughs> this is, that's it of my presentation. Um,